завтра мы будем Сейчас я позвоню. Сейчас я позвоню, узнаю. And welcome to the Lagoon Air European Curling Championships 2011. We're bringing you the gold medal game between Norway and Sweden. We are live here at the Mega Sports Arena from Moscow, Russia. And here we see the teams coming out. Norway in the red, Sweden in the yellow. As we see some of the other participating teams here at the European Championships. So this should be an interesting game between the two best teams really here going into this tournament. Fantastic view of the Laguerre European Curling Championships, the arena here. 14,000 capacity, a little bit off it today. <laughs> yeah, as so I take a look at uh, lead, uh, Hovarvald Peterson, lead for Norwegian team. Uh, we pop over to uh, the second player of this team. It's uh, Christopher Sva. Always a happy boy, and uh, third is Torgan Engor. And always at skip for the Norwegian team, Thomas Erzru. Uh, team Sweden now, it's Victor Schall at lead. Second is uh, Frederick Lindberg. Third is Sebastian Kroep. And here is the skip. <laughs> Nicholas Edin. Some of our younger fans in. Maybe a European champion in the making there. So, these teams have faced each other already in this competition. And there we see it, Sweden versus Norway in the 1-2. Norway dropped down to the semi-final. Sweden progressing to the gold medal game. And in the round robin, it was Sweden who also picked up the win. Two, two very tight games though. Um, not, no, no landslide win for Sweden. As we take a, look, take a look at the rules of play, you have to play eight ends uh, as the playoffs. You get 73 minutes per team and you have one coach interaction, meaning your coach can, can come down and have a chat, but your clock will start running. And obviously, if your time runs out, you'll lose the game. But that rarely happens. With teams just uh, having some practice lines, just warming up a bit. Obviously, I've been uh, probably got, been out for a, a jog or <laughs> Some jumping jacks already, but just a uh, couple of slides to start them off. And uh, Sweden will have, have hammer af, after they, will, they came in to the final with uh, Bravo from the 1-2 page. So first look at uh, Haver Van Peterson for Norway. He's uh, been in this team quite a long time now. Yeah, 
And it's going to start off with a nice guard in Sweden. Just going to come around this. Nicholas Edin is called for the draw by his uh, lead player, Victor Schell. He's been also our lead through the round robin, playing very, very well. He's been, uh, well, percentage wise, he's been 5-6% uh, better than any lead out here. So he's been uh, very steady in playing great games. Uh, this time, just maybe a bit high on line. Yeah, 89% from Victor Schall. That really is a great <laughs> performance throughout the tournament. So, a couple of stones in play early on. A nice uh, nose hit by another great lead hover. He's uh, been all star lead at the World Championships before. Certainly knows how to put the stones in the right spots. As we again take a look at Victor Shell. Looking to come after this red one. <laughs> and uh, just going to punch that one through and sit there nibbling the forefoot. So, um, Norway team has uh, every team had five players and uh, they've been alternating at second position. Thomas Levold on the bench today was uh, coming out for a couple of games, but uh, first offers uh, playing in this game. Yeah, it's uh, been a bit of a, a squad rotation, uh, Christopher and Thomas Levold. I'm sure Thomas is a little bit uh, disappointed not to be playing in this final. Well, there's certainly you'll have a problem when uh, when you bring on your alternate player to play a couple of games and uh, he plays really really well and you win games and uh, <laughs> it's hard to just go back and uh, put Christopher on and. Basically, having five really good players, you're going to just have a luxury problem, really. But um, you have to remember that this this group of players has been uh, doing quite well over over the years and getting to the Olympic final in Vancouver. So choosing to go for the, the Olympic silver lineup. Also. Uh, European champion from last year in Champery. So looking to win back to back European Championships. Yeah, 2009 champions, 2010 champions on the ice. Uh, great to, to see the informed teams of these tournaments uh, in this final. You know, these uh, teams that have played each other quite often, but I don't think they'll played a, a European or World Championship final yet, so uh, certainly a great match up here for the last game of this uh, of this event here in Moscow. Yeah, Sweden again coming round that guard. Okay. Just uh, over curling and uh, it's going to pop out on the other side. So oh, probably can see half of it here. And just gonna come down with a with a board weight. Play for 30 years, uh, Torger. So I've only been on the ice since I was uh, quite the young boy. Yeah. Yeah, he did uh, skip the team at the World Championships last year. Thomas Olsrud having to head home 
So Thomas uh, Lovell stepped onto the ice. So he's uh, an accomplished yeah. skip himself. Managed to pick up a uh, silver medal. Getting beat by Canadians, Canada's uh, Kevin Cui in the final. So first down of uh, Sebastian Kraup. Picked up a cold during the week, but uh, seems to have recovered. So um, they brought on Oscar Eriksson to play two games as he was on the bench. Or not, maybe not even on the bench, just back home at the hotel trying to rest. Uh, I just get over this cold. Uh, it seems to be all right now, though. Sebastian Krupp plays a good draw. And uh, Norway's only left with this uh, run back. So Torger's going to play a hit on his own red. Run it back to catch the yellow. Uh, seems to be close with this one. And uh, he's going to make that shot. So... Good start for him, but certainly looking to, to stick to stick the guard here and back. But I think we'll be happy to have removed that Yellowstone. So Sebastian Crew. Just looking for the takeout. And I don't think we'll see Norway going too aggressive. So, this one from Thomas Oldswood. Nice takeout. So I'm just gonna look for a hit and roll to the wing here. So certainly looking to blank the end here, Sweden. Uh, it's going to hit and run here, so that means that uh, Norway has a free chance of uh, drawing around this guard and either pick up a steal or force Nicholas Adin to, to only get the one in the scent. So a bit of a mistake there by Nicholas Adin. Certainly did want to hang around and make Norway play the hit, allowing him to blank, but now Thomas Ulsrud gets the chance to maybe get a good shot stone in by the guard as we see him uh, thoroughly cleaning the stone.
Stop. Good communication all the way down here. Supers calling the wait. Thomas and Torger just uh, calling the line, uh, wanting to cover this one as much as possible. Is more or less all in behind the guard. At least Nicholas Adin wouldn't be able to blank the end. You see the good finish on the ice here, really moving at the end. And uh, does a get in behind the guard, and Nicholas Adin is looking for a little tap to score his one. We'll just come around here and tap the right one back. Try to sit shot. Score one point. So just, uh, just leaving this one alone. Maybe just a bit too heavy from uh, the skip, Nicholas Adin. But he does come down and. Uh, Push the right one out of the forefoot and sit them, sit there himself to, to score one. Yeah, it's not the start uh, Sweden would have wanted. Good start for Norway. They forced the the one and turned the hammer. Nicholas Adin, he's top of the European curling tour uh, money list at the moment. He's uh, played 45 games in the tour. Winning 32, losing 13. Spent a bit of time out in Canada. Won a tournament out there. And he also won the Oslo Cup way back in September. So he started the season off pretty well. And you know that in, in five days, he's, uh, he has to be in Canada to play another game. He's on the ice and... Uh, Ontario to play Brian Gushu in the, the BDO Canadian Open. So, quite the busy team, Nicholas Adin. Uh, we'll take a look at the medals here and the European Championship trophy, and of course, that Allegri Air cheese. So this guard just uh, certainly caught some curl and uh, was going to go a bit wide and it might be a bit too long, too far away from the house but uh, I think they might be able to use it though. Victor Shell also looking to place this guard uh, close to the house. Obviously, if you keep it too far fr far from the rings, just allowing your opposing team to come around and tap your stones out. Yeah, that's a great shot from Victor Shell. Great setup play from the young Swedish lead, uh, taking control of the front of that uh, house area. Forcing Haber Van Peterson to chase him on the intern or the clockwise draw. Yeah, Victor Shell's been doing that all week. I've rarely seen him miss a shot. And uh, struggling a bit with the ice here, it seems. Just, uh, just catching another path on the ice and uh, slowing down. <laughs> Just uh, heard the players saying that uh, he's just just came off the off the keen path and 
in this this <laughs> the slower the slower path. Just uh, guys can be a bit tracky sometimes. Uh, it's going to be faster Take down. Stop. Some parts of the of the sheet, and uh, maybe if Fredrik Lindberg's found the he's found the fast track, and uh, you have to go deep with this one. Yeah, slips past that top yellow, a little deeper than he would like. Would have liked that one just uh, on the T line. So Thomas Ulster is uh, called for the peel. Can't really afford to keep those centre guards in play. It's a big backswing from the second player, Christopher. And he's uh, done quite well, but uh, does leave a couple of guards up in front. Take another look at it. Driving the yellow onto the other yellow in the house. A chance now for Sweden to come around that uh, long red guard, which has been left in play. A great shot from Frederick Lindbergh, known probably more for his uh, big weight up to eight takeouts, but plays the finesse, draws really, really well as well. Yeah, good, uh, good overall player. As we see, Christopher playing the same shot, basically running the red one back. Oh, just goes by those yellows. Couldn't be more than an inch off that. Yeah, very close to picking the one off the forefoot. So Sebastian Krepp just looking to, to guard up his, uh, his yellows on the house. Just looking for a bit of curl to place this one on the center line. And he's done that well. Yeah, maybe a, a wee bit uh, further than he would like. It's only uh, closer he get, easier for Norway to... Is there a gap there, do you think, Sander? Could they get down through there at uh, weight? Well, it seems like uh, there's a gap. Um, take a look at uh, coach, coach Ole Englalsen of Norway. <laughs> Waves to the Jumbotron here in the Megasport Ice Palace. And they're not gonna... Uh, not gonna touch this and that's the most horrendous result for him. Yeah, it didn't uh, clear the guards off. <laughs> so Nicholas Adin will ask a third player, Sebastian Kraup, to probably through the guard rather than come in. Yeah, it's starting to get difficult for Norway now. Just uh, not being able to, to remove any of the shot stones or the guards. Sweden being able to just clog everything up. And uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a bit hard for Norway to maybe score in this end. Well, I uh, need to see a great shot from the third Torger Neger as uh, <laughs> we uh, take a look at the other Swedes up on the bench. This is Marcus Hasselborg, former teammate of Nicholas Adin. This time he's here as a coach. Been out there helping the team out uh, in practice and uh, just for morale, I guess. Happy, it's just a, it's a good lad. Yeah, so uh, meanwhile, back with the game though, uh, it's uh, pretty interesting here. 
Logan Ergard been asked to uh, play the tap back on the one in the forefoot. So big stone, can't really afford to miss this one. Yeah, not uh, not clear on the guards, meaning uh, they really need to to make this one, but it's looking heavy and a bit wide. And it's just going to slip past everything, just nudging off the back yellow. And uh, Norrie in some serious trouble here. Yes, see the, the men and women's team of Germany looking on. Obviously, most teams participating in this event uh, in the stands now to, to watch the exciting final. Eddie looking to maybe just guard the, guard the hole or maybe come into the top of the house. So we're looking to come a bit further down. Um, just wanted to be closer to the house than the, that red guard and uh, kind of block off the run back. This, but now Nori will be able to maybe play that yellow on the center line onto the red, run that one back. But a huge shot called by Nori. Thomas Ulstrad really needs to pull off some magic here, tidy up things. So usually uh, you will think of Thomas as a, more of a draw player, not uh, the one to, to play the, the, the double run backs, but can't play the good shots. This time he's going to catch the guard a bit high and uh, not being, being able to do much with the situation. So things looking good for Nicole Sudin. If he can get a guard on this, it's looking pretty ominous for uh, Skip Thomas Olsrud. So quite heavy with that one, and uh, just looking to steer off the the corner guard, but he may, may have left a gap. But Norway just looking to score one here. <laughs> Seems to be uh, a reasonable gap, but. Yeah, so a bit of a mistake from the dealing there. Had an opportunity to really apply a bit of pressure, but uh, the tap back for one really isn't that hard now. 
Du får høre det med hack, så kan du ikke våne da. Nei. Might even be there for two. Maybe at Hackwake, what do you think, Sander? Do you think you can see enough? Yeah, I don't think they're too concerned about scoring two, but uh, just might be there. Just at hack weight, maybe. So I'm not sure what uh, weight they're going on here. I thought a barrier weight was uh, just indicated. We'll see. Thomas Ulcerd. Basically, if he gets through the gap, he'll probably be okay, but he's uh, seemed to throw on this one wide. But Cashin's a curl now, and all of a sudden he's sweeping this for line. Will they get through the gap? They seem to have. And it's a double for two. That's a great shot by Thomas Ilsrud. And it certainly was there, Kenny. And uh, all of a sudden, no really pick up two. Certainly didn't seem like that was going to happen in this end. So look at, yeah, look at this great, great footage show. here in the Megasport Ice Palace, just uh, being able to come around, come around the guard, through the gap, and make that double, and score two points. <laughs> yeah, so he really did uh, turn that end around. Sweden looked like scoring two, and Norway managing to pick up two. Yeah, just a mistake from Nicholas Adin there, not being able to to guard the gap, and even uh, raising one of the Norwegian stones into the house. So I think we were, we were agreeing on that maybe Nicholas Adin's team is a favourite for for this game, beating Ulster four times in a row now, uh, coming from uh, the one-two page off a win of Norway and just uh, looking slightly stronger than Norway. Yeah, but that uh, that shot there on the second end, uh, it's uh, it's what uh, champions are made of. That really, that's the the big shot uh, that. Uh, Thomas Ulsrud might have needed to play just to uh, turn his fortune over Nicholas Adin. Yeah, I think that shot's just certainly just going to boost uh, the morale and confidence within the Norwegian team and maybe just uh, Nicholas Adin feeling, feeling a bit worried. But. Uh, are not being able to come around the guard here it does leave chances for Sweden. Yeah, I'm all surprised they've not uh, come around the center here with this. But, uh, I like them to go around the corner. And that's a bit of a mistake, pulling up short there. So Norway have the chance of uh, maybe playing the, the tap up. Is that what they're uh, called, or is it just a draw on the end turn? Yeah, it seems to just be a draw here. Teammates uh, telling second player Christophe for that. Play the tap if you want, but um, seems to be comfortable with just playing the draw. So both leads just uh, coming up over short here to leave a couple of guards around and we might see another uh, a messy end. Just, just dragging this one all the way down here and uh, 
Just going to stop short of the forefoot. Team Spain all looking on in their uh, colourful uh, jackets. Yeah, so uh, you see the guards out front and a bit of a shaky start from uh, Frederick Lindbergh there as he tries to play the run back. Yeah, just over curled there and uh, was looking to open things up and maybe slide the shooter in. But neither has happened. And this time around, it's Norway being able to just uh, guard up a shot stone. <coughs> so I just played the draw this time. It's going to play down the same line. Just take up some weight. But uh, sweepers not touching this one. Just needs this one to settle down. And uh, it's going to pull, pull short of the house. I do think we'll see another run back. Call by Nicholas Adin. Seems like maybe you can play the run back and... Uh, well, maybe tap your yellow in at the same time. So a bit of a control drum back and he's gonna make that shot. Not being able to tap his yellow in though. Norway, another chance to play to come around. See <laughs> five stones on the right hand side of the sheet. <laughs> Left side is open though. Just uh, come around the guard here and maybe put a bit of pressure on Sweden. <laughs> Yeah, a few yellow counters sitting just that short of the house, Sander. I think uh, normally I've got to be uh, a little cautious of them. You see the three just grouped to the left, short of the house. Yeah, anything can happen in curling, you know. Just uh, looking at that previous end, looking like Sweden was going to score all day, and then all of a sudden Norway gets to see the swing on this ice. Just as it uh, begins to slow down, really moving fast at the end. And the sweeping action of Christopher Sfadia. <laughs> really putting uh, his weight on the broom there. Yeah, he's certainly got plenty of that. <laughs> So, trying to play the double run back. Yeah, I think it's over curled on this one. Ah, uh, just uh, yeah, it does uh, does move the red, but just listening in on uh, Nicholas Adin's uh, line call there, not too optimistic. And usually, you don't really have to. You don't even have to see the shot being played. You can just listen to the skip's reaction and you'll know if it's good or not. Well, certainly you will, because you understand the Swedish side of things, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately for me, uh, I can't. So this one from Torgan Ergard. You see Howard Van Peterson there on the left. Christopher Sva on the right. So a lot of support for the Norwegian side here. From the Mega Sport Arena in Moscow. Certainly made an impact with their uh, 
brightly coloured uh, attire. <laughs> Let's see. I think uh, both these teams have uh, a number of fans. Just, uh, you know, they're, they're just both uh, good friends, these teams, and uh, they're, they're all good, good lads and... Uh, don't really have a, a reason to hate the guys on these teams. Just, uh, just looking happy, joking through, throughout the week, and uh, playing good curling. Most, most importantly. Sebastian Cripps playing uh, just a very controlled remark. Usually see them play a bit more weight on these type of shots. Yeah, so uh, Norway looking strong in this end. It's certainly quite similar to the previous end, just uh, this time Norway and the... Norway with the, the stones in the house, trying to guard up. So just going to play a guard. Well, doesn't want to allow Nicholas Adin to run his yellow back. So just uh, maybe halfway in the middle of the, just in between the hog line and the house. So sweepers working hard on this one. Yeah, just needs to curl a bit more. If they want to cover the yellow. And probably done enough to yeah. cover the outside edge of that yellow. Yeah, just enough, I think. So, interestingly, uh, Thomas Wolfrid, not one to uh, many games in the World of Curling Tour this year. Well, probably been one of the better teams uh, in previous years, winning a lot of tournaments, but this season not doing so well. Yeah, they've only made two quarterfinals. Uh, by the Masters uh, way back in September and Oslo, Oslo Cup in September. Not made a, a playoff stages uh, since then, so this is our first sort of a Sunday appearance or, or Saturday appearance uh, since uh, way back in, in September. Yeah, and that's probably due to the fact that we uh, we get ice quite early in Oslo and uh, usually they get, get off to a good start, but hasn't really uh, excelled in the number of tournaments they've uh, participated in. This week has been better though. They were, we're starting off a bit dodgy, losing to Latvia. Bit of a surprise here. But I think uh, this week's been really good for the team. And just making the final, I think we'll be happy about their performance. So this one from the Dean, looking pretty high and heavy. Yeah, not doing too much there. I wonder if maybe Ulster wants to come around here. Where are 
Ideal. So it doesn't seem that Nicholas Adin is left with too many shots here. And um, Norwegians just looking to to guard up that uh, that gap. Maybe just bite the house slightly to lie three. Oh, so maybe put a bit too much weight on this one. Just looking to nibble the rings. Yeah, this is going to make it hard for Nicholas Adin to... Yeah, but this time he's play the draw. He's just going to go a bit deeper. But I think that's... Uh, it's not too bad for them. So just uh, a bit too long and just over curled slightly. We're just looking to to guard the gap, but you know it's uh, it's going to be hard for Nicholas Adin here to score. I think seems like maybe you have to play the intern draw here to to give up one. So quite the similar end to what we had in the second, but Nicholas Adin is uh, not left uh, a chance of scoring two whatsoever. He's uh, got to do quite much to score. And I think this draw is just to, just to give up one, give up a steal of one for Norway. Yeah, this one needs to uh, get a piece of the forefoot though. But, um, it's going to carry way too much. There's uh, not, not, no chance of Scoring for Nicholas Adin. Uh, but he's going to do basically the only thing uh, he could, and that's uh, give up a steal of one. Sometimes you're not left a shot to score. Yeah, he could have maybe uh, tried a shot off one of the yellows, but uh, if you give up three in a final like this, uh, it's really an uphill struggle. But only trails with two if he can maybe get his two back or uh, a single, get back in the game. Uh, he's not out of it. So, Norway to lead off in the fourth from a rather shaky start. Norwegians are looking pretty good in this final. So, Victor Schell being asked for corner guard. As we said, uh, Victor Schell averaging 91% uh, has been out playing uh, all the leads by quite some margin. And certainly has 
certainly been the best uh, so far. Hovar struggling a bit, but it's only through three ends, so I'll expect him to, to we'll get a, b a bit of uh, get some more solid numbers through the game. Still seven ends to go. Norway up by two points, but That certainly isn't a, a huge lead. So he's going to slip into the rings and Victor Shell. Looking for a little uh, hit and roll here. 96% for him. I think maybe that's uh, just a tad too high. He's only played six shots, so uh, and, uh, he did miss one in the, the previous end, so means uh, he shouldn't be playing more than uh, 82. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you know... Stats don't uh, really paint the, the, the correct picture. It's the only stat that matters, really, is uh, who has the points on the board. Det är I see there's a, a gap there between the yellow and red at the front of the, the plate as Ulle, the Norwegian coach, I think he'll be pretty happy with the way things have panned out so far. I don't think they'll mind catching the guard, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He yeah, played safe though, uh, did catch the guard. Not a, not a disaster that really. Yeah, the, uh, they were discussing that, the, the fact that if you just stick off the guard you might remove your own, but he's, he's jammed it and it's left it. Not too bad. Well, these teams have, they have so much respect for uh, each other, knowing that uh, if they leave him a shot, they uh, often will make it. And even though things seems to uh, seems to be all right, you never know what uh, the opposing player might uh, pull out of the hat. Just turn the situation all around this time. Nice draw by Frederick Lindbergh. So Norway, gonna be a little cautious uh, with this one. Can't afford to be uh, on the outside. As we see the English team there who picked up the bronze medal in the B division. Okay, go out so, initially just looking for a double uh, and just hit and roll in behind the guard and he's done that knew that they uh, probably uh, was going to have to remove one of their own yeah Sweden uh, I like them just to play the draw I'll play the out turn this time We have a couple of stones in front. They can uh, easily run that back. You don't want to leave a, a run double here. Knowing that uh, third player Torger's uh, top to play a shot. Uh, 
That went over curling. It's a chance for uh, Norway to play a takeout in that yellow Swedish stone. So although playing 54% on paper, uh, Dagen Ergard and Norway are 3-1 up after three ends. Yeah, well, through through uh, three ends, he'll you drop out. He'll drop down about 18% for every miss you make, but things are going to even out a bit more uh, after 10 ends, I would guess. And uh, certainly expect these teams to be playing above 80 percent but when they play each other they're going to be left hard shots so uh, sometimes you might see the numbers drop down ju just due to the due to the fact that they have a lot harder shots to make yeah they do leave a lot of stones lying around so both these sides have one european title to their name Looking to add to the tally today. So maybe just struggling to get the weight uh, we've seen earlier today. Uh, the Swedish women's side not getting to grips with ice early on. So here we see Hans Futrich, uh, chief ice technician here in Moscow. Done a great job of uh, preparing the ice and getting things ready for this event. See, there's uh, two different uh, types of granite in these curling stones, called uh, inserts, basically uh, having one type uh, a bit harder uh, on the outside, uh, the striking band, just uh, if you know the stones are going to hit each other at some weight. A lot of times that through the years you want some uh, hard stuff on the outside and uh, just underneath you have what I think is called the blue hone granite which is uh, the good stuff when you're looking at getting the stones to glide. <laughs> I think uh, Nicholas Hedin will uh, play the takeout this time. He does have the chance to play maybe the out on draw right around the outside. Yeah, I think you, maybe you can allow yourself to play one blast here before playing the draw. Maybe Nicholas is his first don't. You might just have to play a draw, but... Could be a treble on, maybe, for Sebastian Kripp here. Just looking to spill some granite. granite. See ya. A little push there from Kripp. We'll see what happens here, if it's high. It's gonna. It's gonna be all right. Just removes two reds. Does shit. Sit shot, but uh, is in the open. Norway a chance to just uh, hit and stick to lie three. As uh, we see uh, 
Team France. Wilfred Kalu there at the end. So, perfect game so far for Thomas Dolsrud. Yeah, had, hasn't done too much wrong and play that great double in the second end to score two. This time, uh, maybe rolling a bit to the wing. We're just looking at uh, just a nose hit, I think, but not at the, not the end of the world for him. Nicholas Hedin looking at a uh, hit and roll. Needs to hang around with this. So, some difficult shots for Edin. That's why he starts to play low. And doesn't quite make the roll. Yeah, I think it might be left uh, an even more difficult shot with his, uh, with his last stone here. if. Thomas also plays the nose hit. So the thing he doesn't want to do here is roll to the left or the right. Just, just play the nose hit and that's going to block off that draw path for Nicholas Adin. And he's going to have to come wide and onto a, 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 fre a fresh path of pebble. Needs to curl a bit more here to get the nose hit. Nah, he's gonna roll off uh, and still leave a, good, a gap. Still a good shot there, though. It's difficult for a, a Dean to play the draw now. So is he uh, looking at the double here, do you think? Yeah, seems like uh, he's going to play a hit in here and uh, remove two reds. Seems like he has a couple of options, uh, two different doubles on, maybe catch the back one, maybe a treble. See what happens here, Nicholas Adin. Yeah, looks in for a bit, just on that half stone, do you think? Yeah, seems like a half stone shot, just not not electing to play the draw, doesn't want to give up a, a big steal here. But usually is very accurate with this weight. Just a double to stick the yellow. And uh, he's going to do quite well. Jumps at the back, but that doesn't really matter because uh, his shooter will stick in front for shot stone and they'll pick up one. But Norway in the driving seat turned the hammer and their one point up on Sweden. Yeah, nice uh, take out there from Nicholas Sedin, but only for one.
So there we see one of the fans in. Rather colourful, I would say, no? Yeah, a bit of right, white and red, white and blue. Maybe not the Norwegian colours. <laughs> well, certainly is Norwegian colours, but uh, seem to be a Russian there. So, Harvard Van Pearson being asked to draw the wing. They were uh, looking to draw the wing here. Uh, let's pull up short. Well, it's going to be a guard instead for uh, Norway. Yeah, Norway not willing to leave too many stones about. So, two guards on the centre line are there. This one looking pretty good from Howard. Needs to sit down. And great shot from the lead. This one looking as if it's needing a little bit of weight. So Thomas just said, doesn't mind if uh, catch the long guard that's way out front there. So probably taking a little bit tighter ice than the, they would expect to make the shot. Yeah, I'll expect the sweepers to come into play here. But so Christopher or Bompy as he's known to most people in the curling world. Oh, he's gonna. Maybe catch us a bit too high. Catch his own. Does spill the yellow, but does spill his own shot. Stone as well. Super's working hard on this one. Come here, King. Okay. It is past. What's it? Top D. Oh, great shot from Lindbergh. Right down on the money. <laughs> Certainly some weed on this shot here, but 
Well, he manages, manages to catch the one guard. So, fair way to go in the same jet. Sebastian Krug looking for another long guard. So having to go for uh, for weight. And they shot and um, well judged as well by the two swoopers. They knew it was a little light, so swooping just uh, prolonging the travel of the stone. Looking to play the double on the guard here. See what happens. Oh, that's a wonderful shot there. A wonderful shot from Tokan Ergard, spraying everything. Yeah, and receives an applause here. So, couldn't have done too, too much better with that one. He removes both guards and runs the red one back. Oh, well, you could have caught it a bit thicker to stick the red one, didn't you, didn't you think? <laughs> oh, that's uh, certainly going to help Norway out, Sebastian Kraut. Had to draw the wing, so they're going to leave the forefoot open for Norway, so no matter what happens now, it seems that Thomas Ulster will have a shot to at least score the one. And that's uh, a very important thing when you have last on, just at least uh, you have a chance to score one. But there are st still a couple of stones to go. A nice stone from Torga, really upped his game. Yeah, two great shots by him. And uh, Nicholas Adin has got to <laughs> got to be a bit careful here not to to jam the red one on the back yellow. So it's more or less going to catch this as a, a bit thinner than half, I think. So not sure if he's going for a nose hit or the more thin hit and roll. Yeah, just looking for the half stone shot to check to the wing. He's uh, avoided the, the jam at the back and uh, lying two now, but allowing Thomas Ulster to come around the guard. Just, just, just discussing what stones to play because before the final, uh, you played uh, well, almost two games on every sheet, and uh, you pick up on a couple of stones, and uh, both teams are allowed to just uh, have a pick from the sheets and what stones they would like. So sometimes they pick 
the stones I curl the most because uh, usually you're left more options with uh, the stones that curls. So I like to play, to play the number seven on this occasion. So this one uh, is probably one of the stones that does catch a bit more curl. Yeah, it seems to have uh, done this quite well, Thomas Ulsrud. He's more than buried in behind the guard. In front of the T line, so Nicholas is it looking for a corner freeze or a little tap, maybe? Just want to try to lie a shot here. And again, a uh, difficult shot left for Nicholas Dedin. Yeah, this one's going to be pretty perfect. And the line's looking pretty high at the moment. Maybe we need to go in behind this red. Uh, it's looking close. And, uh, I think that's a pretty much perfect shot by Nicholas Dedin. You see uh, the Welsh team, who also were playing in the Bs. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Norway, just looking to score one here. Just uh, coming down into the forefoot. Thomas Lovold on the right. Nicked by coach Ole Ingelsen on the bench for this occasion. He's played a couple of games in this event. This team usually doesn't bring their alternate on at all. But it's been a bit, it's been a bit different this time around as they've uh, struggled in the season, just looking for a bit of change and maybe that bit of change just, uh, just helped everyone. As you see, Ilsha drawing the edge of the button for one. Yeah. So as the teams head into the break, it's Norway leading 4-2. Norway started the stronger in this final. Uh, taking a look back here, uh, the first end, Nicholas Adin only left with a shot to score one. Oh, just want to come around the guard here and uh, play a tap up to score his single. And uh, does curl enough to do that, so Sweden scores one in the first end. Second end. Thomas Ulster faced with a really difficult shot, but Nicholas Adin did leave a slight gap for the Norwegian skip. And uh, he gets through the gap and even curls enough to catch the back one and play a huge double to score two. I don't know where. A great shot by the, the fourth player. And uh, Nicholas Adin again faced with a difficult challenge and 
and the third third end re didn't really have a shot to score one here and uh, just going to draw the house to give up a steal of one couldn't really do much else here and uh, Norway pick up a steal at one point and uh, now after five ends we have a four shots to lead for Norway Sweden does have hammer however that's what they're playing for there, the gold medals of the Laguille Air Switzerland European Curling Championships 2011 here from the Mega Sports Arena in Moscow. So what will uh, Ule, the coach, be saying to Thomas and the guys here at the fifth end? Probably not too much, I think. Uh, probably, I think he's going to just listen more than he's going to talk. Typical, Christopher, as usual, always uh, eating. <laughs> Well, he does burn off a few calories playing in the Na it was a Norwegian uh, Championships last year. Uh, played three eight in games. That day, burned off 6,000 calories. Jeez. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> curling is, uh, can be a good, good exercise too. <laughs> PL Lindholm here, uh, head coach for Team Sweden. Yes, Sweden already uh, losing the women's final uh, this morning, so uh, not wanting to uh, lose a second final. Take a look at the stats here. Norway in the lead. Percentage-wise, not too uh, huge numbers, but they've been playing well and leaving each other difficult shots. And it's just been the draw draw play, it seems, that's uh, been the big difference between the teams. Norway just, uh, just placing their shots a bit better with the draw weight. back of the rings and this is what they refer to as the pebble trap because after after five ends uh, the ice makers will come on and put a bit of fresh pebble just down the sliding sliding track so when you come out to play the fifth end you're just gonna slide that bit uh, faster without realizing it and sometimes you're gonna slide uh, just put put the stones maybe back at the t-line or Play that corner guard into the house. Yeah, that break and play sometimes just unsettles some players. But Hovar's uh, <laughs> it's been been playing uh, so many championships. Uh, he should be able to adapt. <laughs> you, I've seen him basically taking two stones and trying to drag the stones down to break the pebble before he plays his first shot. <laughs> This time, uh, does uh, keep the stone in front of the T-line. Uh, 
igenom den förra. Nej, baka på den. Baka på den. Sorry. 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 Nästa dryg, sorry. Nästa dryg, sorry. Lite hård ändå. Oh, nice hit and roll by Vector Shell. Plays the guards and the draws to perfection, but certainly does small hit and rolls. Yep. Oh, he's, uh, he's doing them quite well as well. There, 83%. In the tournament, he's uh, certainly the second player I would want uh, in my team if I was uh, putting a all-star team of uh, players together. So I'm just gonna peel the guard off here. Yeah, so Sweden continue to throw the corner guard. Uh, just short of play to run a few stones down. So Thomas electing uh, to play the hack weight around the guard that you see, maybe see an inch or so of that yellow stone behind the guard. So a chance to come around it. So very solid numbers for the Norwegian third. Looking to improve on those numbers by making this hack. Weight shot does punch the went through and rolls over to bite the pin. So Sebastian Krebs just looking to come down here and tap the red back. And has done that quite well and uh, just left uh, a little bed there at the back. Yeah, Sweden just trying to draw the play behind that T-line, hope for a mistake from Norway. Maybe drive the yellow back onto the red and leave it in play. 
Det er nesten den der, jeg sier 16 skal. Du treffer den der tynt. Du går alt her. Alt har vært inn mot den. Ja. Mener du det? Nei. Ta den her du tager. For høyt. Er du happy med det? So this would uh, be one of those times you would like to remove one of your own stones. Don't want to leave that pocket behind the T-line. So, trying to rip off one yellow and one red. See if it can do that. No, it's just going to tick off it. So Sebastian Kraup has left this pocket, just come down and freeze onto the reds at the back. So, chance to play the freeze. Oh, that's a great shot from Sebi Kroup. There's no chance of uh, peeling that out of play, is there? No, it certainly isn't. Uh, even if you try, you'll just uh, jam on the red. So, Thomas also looking at a nose hit here. So, trying to remove one of the red ones. I'm try to sit in front with the shooter. Shit, sit on top of the of the yellow. There we see the gold medal medal winning team on the women's side, it was uh, Scotland, who were eventual winners of that tournament, beating Sweden this morning, and this one from uh, Thomas Oldswood needs to be good, and just rolls a bit off to the side. Yeah, overcurled by uh, just, uh, just an inch there. And it's left uh, Nicholas Adin a shot to light too, but... Will he play the take out or will he play the corner free or just a nose freeze on this? Well, I'm looking at it, maybe a, a little tap, so... I feel like they want to lie to here, but make it difficult for Norway to remove any of the yellows, so just a little tap, I think it's uh, called here, just tap that red one out, just out of the forefoot and set there. Lie to make it difficult for Thomas Olsen to re remove the two yellows. Uh, maybe uh, I think I think it's just a freeze goal here. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the correct shot. Just tap it back, maybe a couple of inches, and uh, possibly sit two. It's going to depend a bit on the line here. If you're a bit tight, you have to go and sweep it. But why do you just have to wait for the curl and uh, sit on top? As you see 79% of the tournament so far. So looking pretty good from a din. Well, it's just uh, a bit heavy and a bit wide. And <laughs> not good at all. No, that's... Uh, Pretty awful there by Nicholas Dean has left a really easy double for Thomas Holstrup. Just a nose hit on the yellows and they both go. So I'd, I'd expect uh, this guy here to, to make the shot and again Nicholas Dean will be left with uh, only a chance to score one. 
So it might be line three here in Norway, but it's in the back of the T-line, so no, a not, not a huge concern for Sweden, but they're looking at the scoreboard, obviously. And there's two shots down. He'd really like to tie, tie things up, but you see here Thomas Ulstrud playing that double. So Nicholas Adin is going to come down the same path. I just score is one. <laughs> yeah, you see it springing both the yellows out of play and just rolling a little bit to the side. <laughs> so Nicholas Adin needing to get a piece of the forefoot for one here in this sixth end. Oh, so we're just easing off this a bit. Is it uh, a bit heavy? Will I catch the backing or does it slide past? Oh, it's just going to slip out, I think. And is that a steal for Norway, maybe? I think it could be a steal of one to Norway. I do think they're going to Ask for a measure here, though. It looks, seems really close from our from our point of view. Yeah, but Sebastian Koop and Tugan uh, going to put the measure on it. Maybe uh, Nicholas Dean just thought he had a little bit of back in, so put a little bit extra weight on it and it run a little straighter. Yeah, maybe the sweepers also thought that. They were sweeping a bit to start off with, and I think uh, just a, a few less strokes of the brush there could uh, could have easily made a win for sure. It does seem like it's a uh, win red, though. The umpires will come out and uh, bring their measurement tools. Yeah, looking at that angle, it looks ever so slightly the red. It's the umpire just uh, has a look and checks it on the, the gauge. Which one is it? It looks like the red. Here we see it, moving the yellow away from the center. So, <laughs> steal of one for Norway. They now lead 5-2 after six ends. Nicholas Adin struggling uh, to get uh, his draw weight in this game. So Norway leading 5-2 
in this seventh end. Haber Van Peterson playing a great shot onto the top of that one foot area. Yeah, important to have Winstone in there, so have a good shot. Don't want to underestimate uh, the shots of the lead players. Make a huge difference later on. Victor Shell plays the corner guard. Sweden looking for points now. Trailing Norway by three. And uh, Norway is really looking the stronger of the sides. And, uh, Sweden just looking a bit down in the dumps, just to not. Uh, yeah, the body language isn't good here in this uh, seventh end. No, they're not talking. Uh, <laughs> not one word between the two yellows of uh, Victor Shell. So not very, not very talkative right now. No. no, even I uh, called on the weight of the stone, just just sweeping it, and uh, that's gonna reflect on to Victor Shell's performance here. Just gets by the hog line. You hear the heavy breathing of the Swedes. Uh, putting a lot of effort into uh, getting that guard over the hog line. Okay. Yeah, Sebastian Kripp uh, panting a bit there. Uh, maybe not uh, feeling 100%. Uh, yeah, he was uh, ill earlier on in the week. So, Christopher Sva. Is he okay? He is. So, Fred Lindberg putting the double corner guard on. Yeah, just um, drawing the opposite side, they're being left uh, that very long guard uh, every time, so trying to come around the long guard and uh, with that, hopefully Norway would peel off the first one and they'll be left a better guard, but seems to see enough of this. This yellow closest to the house, I think they're going after the the best guard here. Although wrecking on the first one's not a problem, but certainly would have liked to can't uh, caught the other one instead. Yeah. So a chance for uh, Sebastian Kraup to uh, get round the corner guard. And here he's uh, still uh, a little bit out of breath, sitting in the hack. Yeah, 
Probably. These guys are pretty fit. Uh, full time curlers now. So he just needs to lower the heart rate and settle himself before he plays this shot. A great shot from Sebastian Krupp. Yeah, so they're just <laughs> electing to pick off the guard here. Can't see anything of that yellow play by Sebastian Krupp, and he's uh, s s sitting there crouching. He's not feeling well, Sebastian Krupp. He's just uh, looking at his expressions. Yeah, he's uh, struggling a little bit out there. Torger's struggling a bit to pick off his guard. And uh, he hasn't quite been able to roll all the way out of the plate. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, Sebastian Krupp uh, finishes this game. He's, uh, doesn't look uh, too well out there. So I think they're just deciding to make a play on these two reds now, is that correct, Sander? Yeah, just... Uh, Coming out with a hack weight. And move things around a bit. So just talking through that, the options here. Skip and why skip. Uh, this is um, so hanging high and just going to slide off and that's not what was called for really. And has left a double for Norway. Although not the easiest double. Thomas Ulster should be able to remove both yellows. <coughs> so we'll catch maybe one third here. And uh, remove two yellow stones. Sweeping this one. Yeah, uh, Van Peterson giving up uh, halfway down. And that's a bit of a mistake from uh, Thomas Olsrud. Chance for uh, Nikas Ladin to play the takeout on this red Norwegian stone. It's the first miss we've seen uh, from Thomas Olsrud in this game. And finally, Nicholas Adin's left, uh, left a shot to light too. Trying to sit to and put a bit of pressure on. Skip. Thomas Olsrud.
no problem at all, but uh, it does leave a, a relatively simple uh, double. Drive that yellow back onto the other yellow. Might be able to remove both the Swedish counters. Yeah, wants to make up for uh, that first mistake. And it's more or less a nose hit here from, uh, <coughs> from the skip. Just drive that yellow one back, catch the other one. So sweepers on this one pretty early. Must be pretty close to it. And nearly makes it. So a chance for Dean to make up for his earlier mistake and narrow the gap to one. If it curled much more, Sander, it uh, could have been a draw for three though. Yeah, um, I think they were. Go I thought they were going for a nose hit, but it seems like they were going. Uh, they were playing the, the slash instead and uh, doing that. Could have jammed on and left a chance for three, but it's not going to be more than two for sure. As we take a look at the Swedish bench, probably a bit more happy with this end. I think Lissadin has a draw to the eight foot for two. That's the first time he's been left. Uh, a shot for multiple points. Sweeper is not. Uh, not going anywhere yeah, near no. this one. No. And this one will need to sit down. And uh, it does just in time. I think the sweepers were a little nervous. So it will be a two to Sweden here in the seventh. The Trail Norway 5 4. Now. Norway in control of this game. Gold winners in the stands to look at the men's final. So just like listening in on Sebastian Krebs' chat with uh, his teammate Lindbergh, just telling him that it doesn't take much for him to to up his heart rate, just uh, to sweep a one stone and uh, he's, uh, he starts panting and uh, not feeling too well it seems. Really nice uh, tech shot by uh, Norwegian lead Hovart. It's a type of shot you usually don't see until the very last end of the game, but in recent recent times you've uh, you see teams playing the tech shot because it's uh, because the leads are are playing them more often, uh, just practicing the tech shots, and it's become a lot of. It seems like it's become a lot of an easier shot. Especially on good ice like this. Um, 
they feel like they feel in control to make those type of shots. You see uh, Peterson trailing Victor Shell a bit. Percentage wise, this time looking for a hit. Really has to sweep this one. Does remove the yellow, but he's gonna roll out himself. So, not the greatest effort from him. Just seemed a bit soft on weight. And uh, so Frederick Lindberg is asked to play the draw. Come around the center guard. So not having the greatest of uh, guards up, he's uh, going to place this one short of the house. And uh, he's done that to perfection, Frederick Lindbergh. Svart trying to uh, just build a single guard. I think we'll see Nicholas Dean throw another centre guard. Interesting to see if uh, the communication gets a little better uh, between these Swedish guys. They seem a little uh, downbeat, don't they, Sander? Yeah, not uh, talking too much, and with uh, Sebastian Kraut being uh, just feeling a bit ill, uh, he's maybe not the person to be to be pepping up the team. Nicholas Sedin's left with that task, I guess, and being on the opposite side of the sheets, it's hard to really get your team going. So then when uh, Krip um, wasn't on the ice, they brought on Oscar Eriksson. Uh, Victor Schell and Fredrik Lindbergh wasn't, wasn't really fired up. Seems like Sebastian Krip is that just that one brick in this team that uh, pulls everything together. And sometimes it's just not having a player to make the shots, but really just... Uh, to keep up morale and just make everything connect. And uh, Christopher looking at the peel of the guard and to slide the shooter into the house, but just over curled by an inch and it's going to stop short. <laughs> So pretty level at the uh, second between Sva and Lindberg, 75-77. Yeah, Christopher uh, playing uh, a bit better on draws, Lindberg a bit better on uh, his hits. That's probably going uh, as the form would, uh, would state. Nice shot. So Togger who's played there. Uh, really well in this game is going to be asked to once again play the takeout yep. he's sort of got better as the weeks went on hasn't he yeah Sander yeah him and uh, most uh, most of the players on the Norwegian team has uh, really upped their game through the course of the week Yep. <laughs> Here we go. 
And I think he showed how great of a player he was when he had to step up as skip in uh, the World Championships in 2010 in Cortina Adampet. So he got to the final without skip, Thomas Ulstrid. You see it, 75 to 68. It's busting through. Maybe just uh, feeling the pace in this game. So important to be uh, fully fit for a big game like this. Yeah, it seems, uh, seems to be uh, giving it everything up. Just, uh, really, just really working through his illness. Not giving up. So I think they'll uh, I like to come in with this one. You think, Sander? Yeah, it seems to be. Um, it seems like Nicholas Adin is going to draw the house. No, no point in putting up a guard here. You'll just see. Uh, you might see Ulster coming around the guard himself then. So we're talking a bit more now, the Swedes, so letting Lucas Sedin know how, uh, how fast the ice is. And, uh, communicating well down the ice. So so looking a bit better after they picked up the two in the seventh. That one maybe just picked up something there. <laughs> Did uh, deviate pretty quickly. You thought they would have uh, managed to get it past. They weren't uh, sweeping for line. Well, I think the sweepers called it a, a bit heavy, but didn't seem to be that that long. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's almost all sort of having a solid game so far. His only missed one shot, I think. Uh, Dean struggling a bit more, but he's being left. Really uh, difficult shots, though. Almost every end. Although he had, he had an open draw to score two in the previous end. Yeah, good, good chance with this one, though. We could get down through the gap between the red and the yellow and get in behind his own yellow. We must hit the luckan. So yeah, there's a there's a bit of a risk. You you might uh, leave a chance for Norway to score two with this one. But you'd think that Sweden just uh, has to go after it, after it at this point, chilling uh, Norway by one point. Only uh, only this end and two more left to go. Yeah, line looks pretty good. Yeah, looking. And this one slipping right to the back of the house. Det er ikke så bra å drive å fri kuddene av meg i hvert fall. Nei, ikke den gule da, i hvert fall. Vi må ikke råd til å gå tight på den gule. Det er meningen. Det er lettere å tappe da. Nei. 
Men uh, Du kan tappe langt sånn. Jeg tror ikke vi skal tappe, vi skal dra i hullet, men uh, okay, Jeg tror vi kjører mindre om det her er innom, så jeg tror vi skal ha noe sånt nå. Ok. Så er ikke den gule der i spill? Nei. Ja, jeg vet hva du gjør det. Ja, bra, det er en dragning. Full åttefot. Halv åttefot. Så... Uh, I had two options here, that's uh, to draw the, through the same part that Nicholas Adin did, or uh, play the tap up. I think uh, the shots just play the, play the draw, Sander, now. Yeah, uh, Elstrud certainly just wants to play the draw here. No, what you can't do is wreck on the no, yellow and push that one in for a steal of two. But just going to come, come down there through the port to score one. And I think uh, putting that yellow that far back in the house was not was okay for Sweden. I have to put it a bit uh, further up. I think maybe El should be tempted to run his own uh, red back there to score two, maybe. This way, you're pretty sure of forcing uh, Norway to take a one. Last stone of the eighth end. Norway looking to score one. But uh, looking for, for curl here. Just needs to... Just to down. Yeah, and uh, didn't need much help from the sweeper there. Just waiting for line. Just pass. Just passes the front stone and it's going to score one. And uh, you will see one of the young Norwegian supporters. So it is uh, Norway who lead Sweden 6-4 after eight ends. Sweden with last stone. So if they could score two here, it would be all level heading into that tenth end. So interesting call from uh, Thomas Olsrud throwing this one through. I think Thomas is just going to take a visit to the little boys' room uh, in this ninth end. So getting down to the business end of this game and it is looking a bit of a struggle for Sweden. Oh, 
all they would need to do here is uh, pick up the two and maybe steal in ten. So Christopher Schwartz with the big weight on the guard. Not really getting involved at all, are they, in Norway? They don't want to play the come-arounds. <laughs> no, just uh, leave as few stones as possible in play. Um, don't think they'll uh, mind giving up two here. No. That you'll have an even score on Norway. We'll get the hammer for the last end, and that's probably... You could, could probably not ask for more. Coming home with a hammer, even score of the final. It's probably uh, good enough for Norway. See uh, some of the younger audience in. They're here to witness the final between Norway and Sweden of this European Curling Championships 2011. Like you say, I don't think Norway are going to be too worried about giving up a two in this end. Eller frisningen. Nej, på bägge. På två försök. Det finns ingen dubbel där. Han kommer måste slå den och rulla. Men då måste jag i fej rulla ganska långt på min nästa för inte igen en dubbel. Jag gillar frisen om vi sätter det, men det är... How do you think, Sam, do you play the freeze or do you, do you play the hit and roll to the side? Well, the freeze is a good shot, but it's just uh, it's a bit harder to play. So I'm just... Um, just oh, looking at our options and uh, just trying to figure out what uh, Norway would do if they pick a, a certain shot and uh, what they feel like is feel as uh, that uh, the hit and roll is probably the easier easier shot here. 
Victor Schell and Frederick Lindbergh working this one hard. It's going to over curl and check to the wrong side of the house. And uh, I just might see Skip Ulstrud come uh, and try for the double. So if I'm not mistaken, I think Thomas Ulstrud has attempted three doubles so far in this game. He made the most difficult one, and yeah. he's missed uh, two of the easier ones. So, yeah. and this, this, do you think this is a easy double or? Yeah, it's a pretty much a nose double. Um, but what the problem is, if he does make the double, Nicholas Dean will have the chance to play a draw around the stone played by Thomas Ulrud. Must be pretty close. Yeah. And jams that one. So, big mistake. Does Sweden go around this again and look for a three? Well, they certainly have the chance. Coming in here, and uh, Thomas Sulzer would probably be forced to play the same run back. And if he were to miss that, be three for Sweden. If you draw to the open wing, you'll probably see a uh, Norwegian skip play the open hit and you'll score two for sure. As we take a look at the bench there, that's Oscar Eriksson on the left, the alternate. He's been in and played a a couple of games this week. I think I'd be going round, Sander, what do you think? Uh, sure is tempting. Um, it's the only way you're, uh, you'll have a chance to score three. And if you just pull just pull short, maybe uh, half hidden there at the top of the rings, probably isn't, uh, probably isn't a double run for uh, Thomas Holstrud. And even if they go for the, the safer shot and draw the open wing, you might not uh, leave it in a perfect spot. You might leave a double with that shot as well. So, just looking at pros and cons here, Sweden, and uh, electing to go for the, the simpler shot, draw the open wing. So Sweden going for the safest option here. And I kind of like this call because if you go around the corner guard, I, I don't see Thomas Hulser really missing a shot to remove one of the yellows. I think it's a little cautious. Uh, doesn't want to leave a double with this one, and I think he has. He has, but it's uh, pretty flat. I think the best you can do is probably hit and roll across alongside this yellow. Well, has missed three kind of easy doubles, and he's uh, gotten one. Really difficult one, so... 
So maybe uh, Thomas Ultra pulling one uh, great double out again. You don't really have to punch that yellow, the second yellow too far. The shot certainly on, and uh, we'll expect a, a nice lift here from Ultrid. There we go. Try to get some weight in that shot. Yeah, just a bit of momentum. Uh, not many people use the, the back lift delivery now. Uh, it's more coached, uh, but the no back lift is uh, more technically correct. Let's see. So, it does seem like Norway's laying a shot, so Nicholas Hedin has uh, got to play, it, play the hit to score two, but I can't remember him uh, missing a type of shot like this, uh, the nose hit for two. <laughs> Don't uh, don't tempt fate there, Shanta. That's what I would say. <laughs> Commentator's curse is that possibly? Possibly. <laughs> I will see. Open it for uh, Nicholas Dean. Looking to score two in the ninth end. Tie things up. Super's uh, just giving this one a bit of a tickle at the moment. And nice from the Swedish skip. So this game all tied as we head into the tenth and possibly the final end. Six each. And it's a bit of a struggle for this Swedish side. They've not really been in the game, but uh, they've managed to get this this tenth end uh, all square. Yeah, scoring two in the seventh, forcing one. And then scoring two back. So, Harvard Van Peterson gonna attempt the uh, tech shot or even maybe just bump this one into the house. So, that's how I think we'd maybe go with a long one first. Is that correct, Sander? The long guard? Yeah, if you put a long one on. You're not going to be able to push into the house for sure, and you're going to leave. Usually, you're going to leave something up there. But uh, Hover has missed this one, so uh, Sweden's going to be able to leave two center guards up. These last ends is uh, really the time to shine for the lead players. Yeah. That's good set up play. A little surprised that uh, Thomas Olsrud is going for this type of approach. I think I might be tempted to put one right round the guard and uh, onto the one, the one foot, get in there before 
Sweden. Sweden. Bitlin har fart! Er ganske lik! Litt mer! Mare! Mare! Ja! Ja! Hart! 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 Hurst! Hurst! Hart! 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 Just catches the top one. Yeah, it's a good shot at that. And the rolls to shoot her are more or less out of play. So, Sweden will continue throwing the guards. Hope for a bit of a mistake from uh, Norway. So it's going to be a bit wide, and uh, Norway might be tempted to try the double peel. Yeah, I think it's there. They'll take it uh, across the face or the slash double, as uh, it's more commonly known as. Well, you win the game for Norway here with a good double. Christopher Swart. Oh, great Reed. shot. And that's what he's been brought back into the team for. <coughs> playing them type of shots. Yeah, game winner shot there. Just uh, opening things up. And Sweden. Is, uh, isn't looking too good for a win right now. It's probably probably needs a mistake from Norway. Well, he played the double, and hopefully he'll be able to do, to make the. The simple single peel. And again, no problems from the man nicknamed Bumpy. This one pretty quick from Sebastian Kraut. He's got to make it over the hog line. Great sweeping action from the, the young Swedes, isn't it? Yeah, probably the best uh, sweeping front end uh, out here in the in the Europeans this year. Strong and fit, and can make that stone travel uh, quite the distance. Now, uh, Torger doesn't want to jam this stone here. Oh, what happened here? Uh, Torger's hogged this stone. See the red light? Well, may maybe stop blinking now, but uh, there we see it. Red light in the stone, that's the first time I've seen this all week. <laughs> so what a huge mistake by uh, the Norwegian third. Yeah, it seems Red like blinking lights. Pretty close to uh, the hog line. I don't think he's, he looked as if he was over there. But maybe just double touched it. He's uh, touch sensitive handles. 
Um, I, I know that Torgers is very close to the hog line every time he does release a stone, and actually before the electronics came into play, he was... Um, he, um, the, you know, when they, they had the hog, hog line umpires there, uh, more stones were taken off back, back then, because it looks like he's hogging the stones. But I've never actually seen him do it until now. And uh, what a crucial point to do that. <laughs> Tenth end of the European <laughs> final. Oh my lord. Uh, certainly trying to make things a bit more interesting for the neutral viewer. <laughs> So after a great double pull from Christopher Sva, um, Sweden looking pretty good to possibly get a steal. But uh, as usual, you see there, Mr. Cool, Thomas Ulfrud, doesn't even uh, fluster at all at like that. He's focused on the job in hand. Yeah, the Norwegian team <laughs> seeming a bit quiet now. Uh, it's a bit of a shock, that. Just hog that stone. Bass and Krep, no trouble with uh, releasing the stone in time. And uh, I wonder where are they going to place this one? There's uh, a guard called for. Yeah, I want a bit of separation between these two stones. Don't want a double pull to be too easy. Yeah, after Shell, Fredrik Lindberg, and even Nicholas Dean comes out to help here to drag this one down. And uh, I think that's enough. Would I like that a little further? So Torger looking to make up for his uh hog line violation. Green lights this time. And he's made that shot. Yeah, he makes up for his early mistake. And uh, I think he'll be very relieved by that. Gets a nice handshake from Howard Van Peters. <laughs> oh, it's going to be huge for him, that. Uh, Good to see they can uh, share a bit of a joke about that. Uh, he doesn't like the flashy rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a relief for Torger there. Mean uh, hogline violation in the last end of the final. But uh, he's made a double and uh, you can't blame him for... Well, if they lose, you can't blame him now. It's uh, pretty much open here, and the uh, only person to to win this game now is Thomas Ulstrud. His team has uh, kept things open and done the job. The forfeit is open. Nicholas Adin draws the wing to the back of the rings. So what's uh, the plan here, Sander? Is he just going to follow that one round? Yeah, let's follow, uh, follow around the guard. Um, as long as he's lying shot, he's, uh, he's happy. Uh, he's uh, expecting a, a freeze by Nicholas Adin, so he wants to drag this one as far wide as possible, but still lying shot. Doesn't know uh, want to leave Nicholas Adin a freeze 
uh, um, being able uh, to freeze and still line the forefoot for Sweden. So I'm just trying to drag this one as far wide as possible. Would have left as much space as he can for his last draw for the win. Chris, Christopher and Hovar. Norwegian front end really working this one to drag it down. Really wants the last shot here. Uh, this one's going to stop short. And that's an, not a great shot by the skip. No, it certainly isn't. And uh, he's basically made things better for Sweden. A better guard for uh, Nicholas Adin to draw behind. So having to sweep that one all the way didn't allow the stone to curl enough. And it seems like maybe Nicholas Adin uh, is able to, uh, to hang on to the forefoot here and still be in be behind the guard. Yeah, I think you can probably get a piece of the, the forefoot. And uh, I'm not sure what the, the young Swedish guys are doing uh, on the bench there, but uh, I think they're maybe praying that uh, <laughs> Nicholas can just uh, pop one right onto the forefoot. So I'm sure Thomas Olger is already preparing uh, himself. So that's one looking pretty good. And that one perfectly on the tee line. Well, Thomas Olger would ignore it and just go for the button. I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah, I think that's what he'll do. It's uh, just needs a piece of that red forefoot area. He looks pretty calm. He knows what he's going to have to do to win this European title for a second time. He's picked up silver twice and bronze twice. <laughs> so uh, only one gold medal to his name. Can he get over the line <laughs> once again? I uh, remember back in uh, Ernstelsvik, the Europeans there. Yeah, uh, had the had the draw to the forfeit to beat David Murdoch of Scotland. It was uh, just a foot heavy, and lost the game. Now it's uh, more or less the same situation. Forfeit draw for the win, and it's just it's not just Thomas Ulstrud to make the shot though. It's the sweepers, Christopher and Hovart. They're the ones that are gonna have to make sure it ends up in the right spot. The only thing Ulstrud can do is to be heavy here. Yeah, use your sweepers. Throw it top four weight. Last on so of the game. Swat and uh, Howard Van Peterson. It's really up to them now. They just need to put that one down into that red four for area. And uh, how have they done? It's looking a bit pacey. Yep. Is it going to settle down? I think it might do. And it's going to set on the lead for the win. Norway picks up the gold here at the European Championships in Moscow, Russia, in the Megasport Ice Palace. Yeah, super and shot from uh, Thomas Olswood. The big pressure yes. slips down. Yes. You see his delight. <laughs> I don't think they can believe uh, after such a turbulent year and uh, they've managed to pick up the win. Weren't in great form coming into this tournament, but uh, that's two years in a row they've managed to pick up the European title. Yeah, back-to-back -back goals. Last year in Champry, this time in Moscow. And the uh, worst season that they, they've had this year. Just uh, having a great week, picking themselves up, coming back after a loss against Latvia in the first round-robin game. <laughs> oh, what a performance. And uh, the coach, Ole Engelsen, certainly happy about this gold medal. Phelan Holm, 
Comes out with a smile and uh, does congratulate the boys. Yeah, there we see the final draw coming down and resting against that button. And a despondent uh, Nicholas Adin offers a handshake. Ulla's uh, delight there, the coach. So the team's uh, just preparing for the medal Thomas, ceremony. Congratulations, European champion. Again, how does it feel? Oh, it feels perfect. Um, uh, I think the best thing is this is probably one of the best matches we played all week and to do to be able to do it in the final because we started off really bad and just picked it up game by game and now we ended up playing a perfect game in the final. Feels good. Did you think differently about this one having had those two close games previously? Yeah, we had two really close games against Sweden and uh, they had hammer in this one as well, but... Uh, the previous two games, we the whole team hadn't played well. Some players have played well, but not the whole team. So now we managed to get on a good show, and we managed to win it. It's perfect. And you knew he'd come back at you. Yeah, and you know this is the old old Skip's dream. You know to draw the four foot to be European champion. It feels really good. You know. And compared to last year, winning it the first time was special. But to do it again after the season you've had. This is really big for us because we had a really bad season so far, but this makes it a good season. So um, it's a big, 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 big one for us. And what happens next? Because this is, this is, you know, this is the ultimate for you, I suppose. World Championships, Olympics. Yeah. Still, are you still going to keep going? Yeah, sure, sure. We, we, our goal is Sochi. You know, and the only thing is probably the European Curling Federation has to look after uh, the trophy tonight because my second Chris, he's going to take it out, out to town. It's going, to, it's going downtown Moscow tonight. <laughs> Big celebrations in the oh, Norwegian yeah. camp. Big, big, big celebration tonight. Congratulations, Thomas. Well Thank done. Thank you. Nicholas, silver medal, not what you wanted, but give us, give us your reaction. Yeah, we had a terrible start to the game. Uh, couldn't really figure out the ice, and uh, we had some uh, some uh, bad shots early on, and uh, that ruined it for us. We played well at the end, but uh, it wasn't enough to, to catch up. It did look like you were going to recover. Yeah, we had a, a good uh, finish to the game, but it was too late, apparently, and uh, uh, we got a fortunate break when uh, Torger hogged his rock, but... Uh, couldn't really manage to put the last few rocks in a good position, so uh, to, we made it too easy for him at the end. It still could have gone either way because, you know, there was that thing with Torger. Things You know things can happen in curling. Yep. Uh, didn't go our way this time, though, so uh, uh, we'll need to try and make some better setups next time and uh, try to make him uh, do some hard hard shots for, for the game. Three matches against uh, Norway, though. You would have settled for winning this one, not the, not the other two. Yeah, uh, we had a really good game against him in the uh, upper page. Uh, we, we wanted to have a similar game this time, but uh, I just struggled with uh, draw weight and curl and uh, pretty much everything in the beginning and uh, just uh, not making enough shots uh, in the first three ends. It was a good final, though. We enjoyed it. Thank you.
So a couple of hundred curling players out here. So, presentation of the men's, men's medals taking place. Yeah, Rasmus Tjerna and his uh, team from Denmark won the bronze final. Yeah, they defeated Yuri Schnidl in that game of the Czech Republic. Czech Republic making their first playoffs at the European Championships. And you'll see uh, silver medalist Sweden head on to the podium. And uh, the Norwegians will have the honor of uh, walking down the ice. All eyes on them. Gold winners here at the Le Greer European Curling Championships 2011. And big smiles all around. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, didn't start the week. Uh, too well, but uh, pulled things together later on in the week. And they are congratulated by the Danes and Swedes. And they are going to join them on the podium. So the medal has been presented to the Danish side. Jules Harry there on the right. And skip there, Rasmus Sterner. That's another medal to his collection. He picked up a silver medal last year in Champery, Switzerland. So rapidly uh, beginning to fill his cabinet. And they are being presented with the large block of Laguerre uh, cheese. Uh, the main sponsor here at the European Curling Championships. So, presentation of the silver medals. It is Skip Neskola Sedin. I'm sure they'll be a little bit disappointed with their performance in the final. But did uh, force Thomas Olsrud to play his last stone. Yeah, 
Yes, Kept Thomas Hulstrid here receives the first of uh, six gold medals. Torger Nergor. Thomas Levold uh, didn't play the game today, but has uh, played great through the week. <laughs> Ole Wilson, the coach, also receives a medal. He's been out here uh, every day watching the team and uh, the Norwegian girls. Maybe not too happy about their own performance, but certainly can look up to the men. And of course the European Championship trophy will be presented to Team Norway. There we go, the big moment. Oh, 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 Yeah, 
so far that has been. And uh, Norway picks up a steal of one after a measure. Seventh <laughs> end, Nicholas Adin finally gets a chance to score two. And this time he is going to stop at the back of the forfeit to score two points and get back into the game. And uh, the last, the last end of the game, Thomas Ulstrud having to play a cool draw to the forfeit to win the gold medal for Team Norway. Just watching the stone as it settled down on the lid to secure a huge victory back to back gold medals for Team Norway. Thomas Ultra the skip, certainly happy. As Norway wins seven shots to six in a thriller of a match.